Okay. Okay, I've unmuted myself. We good? Okay. We're good. Um, yeah, I and I don't know the no. I would just say an announcement. Uh, we had the um, virtual Lutheran Men in Mission um, monthly meeting um, yesterday. I love. I like. We'll do some alliteration here. Um, and uh, it, and we went over a couple things um, talking about uh, you know what we're trying to do and uh, if, if we keep this going uh, every month. So we talked a little bit about the um, PD Indian. We lost on a Bible study uh, prayer group on Mondays and Tuesday evening. We'll try to get together again with our um, our continuing our um, our book study uh, with your God is too small. Um, and that, that's really all I had. We'll, we'll have a meeting in, in December. I think it's the 19th of December, and we'll uh, pick, uh, pick new officers for going into 2021. If there is a 2021, maybe we won't get through this year. I don't know. But um, uh, that, was what we, that was what we discussed yesterday. Uh, that's all I had. Did anyone else have any announcements? Hearing none, we'll turn it over to Pastor Jane. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at Christus Victor Lutheran Church on this Christ the King Sunday. We're delighted that you're joining us and pray that this would be a meaningful time of worship for you. I want to add just a couple of announcements. Um, Wednesday this week at 615, we finish up looking at all of Luther's catechism including the third sacrament of confession. And we will end that session with a, with a closing worship of corporate forgiveness, confession and forgiveness. Um, and then the next Wednesdays, we start our Advent Holden evening prayer. So please, if you have not congregation, um, check that uh, link and record so you're singing can be a part of our worship, of our Advent worship. Um, and next Sunday, as the first Sunday of Advent, I would also like to remind you that in the uh, November uh, newsletter, we had the uh, listing of things to purchase for our Advent project. This is a way for us to care for those who have less than we, um, and it's pretty easy. Uh, December 1, a box of cereal, peanut butter, etc. So check your newsletter. Uh, we'll, we can post that again this week so that you can have it. Then we're going to ask you to bring those items with you to our Christmas caroling in the parking lot. And uh, we will bless them and get them taken to sharing in God's love. That's all I have for this morning. So we... Pause now to take that deep breath, get ourselves centered on worship. Um, let's do that. We begin with a brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the doors to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. 
。アメン The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O God of power and might, your son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Time now for some conversation with the children. And uh, again, like I want to say every Sunday, I wish you were right here in front of me. This week, when you hear me read the gospel lesson uh, right before the sermon, it comes from Matthew. You're going to hear Jesus say these words. I think our new Revised Standard Version says just as much. One of our favorite words here in South Carolina is in as much. And Jesus says, in as much as you have taken care of the least of these, you've taken care of me. So I was thinking, what, what can I do with that? How can I share that with you? And yesterday morning, a friend of mine sent me a video. And ask your parents to look it up on YouTube. Uh, it's eating, it's a little boy eating Twinkies in the park. I think that those words will get you there. But the video starts out with this little boy, maybe seven, eight years old. He's in his kitchen and he's packing his lunch. And he's putting in a sandwich and some Twinkies and a couple of drinks, water, a couple of bottles of water. And his mom comes in and says, what are you doing? He says, I'm going to find God. And he puts his backpack on and he goes out the door. And he goes down to the park. And he sits down on a bench just to eat his lunch, not paying any attention to a homeless woman sitting on the other end of the bench. He doesn't even look at her. He opens up his backpack and he takes out his sandwich and he starts to eat and she's looking at him like, and he sees her and he hands her his sandwich and she just gobbles it up. And then he hands her a bottle of water and she drinks the water. He looks at his watch and said, well, I got to go. And he takes off and he goes home. He walks in the door and his mom said, did you find him? And the little boy said, mom, God is a woman and she has the most beautiful smile. Then the video goes on and you see that homeless woman moving to another bench in the park, sitting down beside another homeless woman. And that woman says to her, why are you smiling? And she said, I just ate Twinkies in the park with God. And she said, and you know what? I just didn't know God was that young. Isn't that beautiful? That, that's exactly what Jesus is saying today. When we take care of someone else, we take care of God. Important lesson to learn. Let's pray. Dear God, dear God, help us remember, help us remember that when we take care of someone else, that when we take care of someone else, we take care of you. We take care of you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from Ezekiel chapter 34. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the country and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall, they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. 
but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horn until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be their prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter one. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with, I, so with, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope in which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among all the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and had made has made him the head over all things for the church, which is, it, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In our first reading from Ezekiel, written way back some 400 years before the birth of Christ, we hear God's words of promised restoration to God's exile people held captive in Babylon. It's interesting, though, to see what needs to be restored. And in the verses just prior to those before us this morning, there's no doubt. God is angry, beyond angry, at the shepherds, the kings of Israel. And God, through the prophet Ezekiel, spares no words in telling them so. You shepherds, you who are in charge of provision for and protection of my people, you have become false shepherds you have fattened yourselves you feed yourselves but not my people under your care you have not strengthened the weak you take advantage of them you have not healed the sick you ignore them you have not bound up the injured or brought back the stray you dismiss them you have not sought out the lost ones you don't care about anyone but yourselves. Therefore, God says, therefore, I myself will do this. I will rescue my sheep. I will bring them out. I will feed them. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will strengthen the weak. I will feed them with justice. I will save my flock. I will judge. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. There should be no doubt in anyone's mind as to God's intent. God, the almighty God himself, will gather God's people and shepherd them as a good shepherd should. And in our gospel reading for this morning, just look where we find this promised shepherd, this one of the household 
of David, the Messiah. We find him right there in the midst of the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the prisoner. Let's take a closer look at this somewhat strange gospel reading for Christ, the King Sunday. Several Sundays back, we heard Jesus' disciples ask him, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? In response, after words of warning about false prophets and false predictions of his return, Jesus told them three parables, the 10 bridesmaids, the talents, and now today, the sheep and the goats, a parable about the judgment of the nations. The son of man, the son of God, Jesus, is sitting on his throne of glory and all the nations, all the nations are gathered before him and he separates them. One group to his right and one group to his left. To those on his right, he says, come, come, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning. For I was hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, in prison, and you tended to me. And to the group on the left, go, go into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, and in prison, and you ignored me. Interestingly, both groups are surprised. Those on the right, unaware that by caring for those in need, they also were caring for Jesus. And those on the left, unaware that by not caring for those in need, they were not caring for Jesus. So what are we supposed to do with this gospel reading on this Christ the King Sunday 2020? What's this message? Biblical scholars debate that question. Some believe Matthew's hearers would have heard this parable as words of promise to them, the early Christian church. They surely were being persecuted, ignored, mistreated by both Jew and Gentile. And they would have heard words of rescue and restoration for them, for the church. And thus sermons that speak to the world's persecution of the church today and God's ultimate plan for its redemption should be today's message. But scholars also encourage a universal interpretation and invite us to take a serious look at how it is that Jesus, the true shepherd king from the household of David, fulfills that Old Testament prophecy of Ezekiel. Remember, God says, I will seek, I will rescue, I will feed, I will bind up, I will strengthen. And that's exactly where Jesus is on this final judgment day. Among, no, not among, but in the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, the prisoner. And just as much as you did it to the least of these who are my members of my family, Jesus says, you did it to me. In as much. In as much. Let's look at this parable this way. David Loos includes these words in the, his commentary this week on this parable. Everyone is surprised, he says, sheep and goats, righteous and unrighteous. No one knows or anticipates that when they are dealing with the most vulnerable and overlooked, the least of these, they are actually interacting with God. He continues, as with the surprising appearance of God in both manger and cross. Hear that, the surprise appearance of God in both manger and cross. God continues to show up where we least expect God to be. The command for us to care for the most vulnerable and the wicked and the uh, those most vulnerable is clear to us throughout scripture. The promise that God has revealed to us when we do so is oftentimes a surprise. Dr. Lose's words led me back in my memory to experience I had on the streets of Minneapolis a long time ago. I've never really shared this story very much. I do so now not to identify myself as one of the sheep, but to share with you the impact this experience 
has had on my life ever since. I was young, probably in my late 30s, and had been invited by Augsburg Fortress to be a part of a, a, of a writing team preparing Sunday school material for young adults. They brought us all to the offices there in Minneapolis for a planning session. It was late November, and mind you, this Southern woman had never been much beyond Southern territories, nor had I ever really seen a real snowfall. Well, we finished the conference on a Friday evening, but our return tickets home weren't until Sunday. When I woke up Saturday morning, it was snowing, really snowing. And like a true southerner, I knew I had to go play in it. I decided to walk, I know better now, but I decided to walk the seven blocks from the hotel down to Nicolette Mall. I have never been so cold, so blinded by snow in all my life. At times I thought the wind was actually going to lift me off my feet, but I made it. I got to the intersection where I would turn left and walk down to the mall. But down a block on the other side of the street, I saw a man on crutches, the, the permanent kind, trying to make his way. He got to that intersection and started across and a huge gust of wind and blowing snow knocked him down right there in the middle of the intersection and his crutches went flying. There were a few cars stopped at that intersection, but no one got out. The man literally crawled to the sidewalk. Still, no one moved to help him. I walked out into the intersection, picked up his crutches and put them down by his side and then stepped back. I didn't know if I should try to help him stand up or not. And I didn't. I watched as he grabbed the crutches, struggled and finally got up. And as he placed the crutches under his arms and started walking away, he turned, he looked straight at me with piercing eyes and said, I get so mad. And then he turned and walked away. I stood there stunned, unable to move. And then it came to me, I just saw Jesus. And as I said, I tell you that story, not because I got the crutches for that man, but because I know I saw Jesus in that man that day. And it changed my life. Now, when I see people in real need, when a request comes for help, when someone asks for food or clothing, I am burdened with my memory of this experience of that snowy, windblown street in Minneapolis. Is this Jesus? Is this Jesus? I ask myself every time. And yes, I will admit, I have been taken for a fool often, even the second or third Sunday I was here. But on the other hand, the question never leaves me. Is this Jesus? I think that's the question this parable calls us, both as individuals and as the church, to address each time we see someone hungry or thirsty or a stranger or sick or in prison. Is this Jesus? Will we, by caring for this person, care for Jesus? Will we, by ignoring this person, ignore Jesus? In as much. In as much. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a Lutheran pastor martyred in Germany for his stand against Hitler, wrote these words. He comes to us in the form of a beggar, of the desolate child in ragged clothes asking for help. He confronts you in every person that you meet. As long as there are people, Christ will walk the earth as your neighbor. So on this Christ the King Sunday 2020, do we want to see the King? Do we want to see Jesus? 
If so, see him here at this altar and at your home altars in bread and wine. And then having been fed with his body and blood, having seen Jesus go out in the streets and byways and look for him there, he's waiting and he needs to be tended to. Amen. church we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages, especially as it continues in our land, gracious God. Bring peace. Bring resolution. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from the systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for those who are in any way needing the touch of your healing hand, for those sick and dying from COVID-19, for those among us, especially Fred Tate, hospitalized with an infection. For all our homebound, and for all we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed who feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And that indeed, gracious Lord, is the prayer we pray every Sunday as we pray for those for whom no one prays. You're there and you invite us to tend to them, to care for them so that in doing, we are tending and caring for you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. May we share Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace to all. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We come now 
to that part of our service where having received from God the gifts of worship and all our earthly blessings, we now pause to give to God from our blessings so that the ministry of the church may thrive. Please place your offerings in a basket there at your family altar or bring it by the church and place it in the lock mail box outside. You also may give online. We thank you for your gifts. By the mercy of God, we now turn to eat and drink this very promise we have been hearing in the scriptures. Paul writes, as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This publicly proclaimed, visible, eatable, drinkable word, like the audible word as well, is given by God to bring us to faith and turn us in love and service toward our neighbor, Jesus Christ whom we encountered in the heart of the scriptures, here gives himself to us in body and blood as the meal of the church. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
As I lift the bread during the words of institution, you are invited to lift your bread there at your family altar. And likewise, as I lift the cup, you are invited to do the same. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Thanks be to God. invited now to place your bread in your hand just as you would do here at the communion rail and as you hear the words the body of Christ given for you please eat the bread and again likewise take the wine in your hand and drink as you hear the words the blood of Christ shed for you the body of Christ given for you the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And now a Franciscan blessing. May God bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half truths and superficial relationships so that we may live from deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of God's creation so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war 
so that we may reach out with hands to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless us with just enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in the world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and all our neighbors who are poor. And now may the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give us reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior and spirit be with you today and always, amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
You were invited to hang around and talk to each other a little while as we prepare here for our